today from my home lab, a video of the VMware vSAN SE here with a very nice four node vSAN ready node. I'm going to get into the details, but first have a little fun. So you're having a complete look around the front and back of this server. And I'm going to show you the features inside and under the hood in my usual manner to try to describe to you what a four node vSAN can look like in a 2U chassis. Now, this is a super micro, SYS, meaning system, dash 2029BT-HNR. nodes, node A, B, C, D. Let me show you around the back. We'll start there and explain what you're looking at. This is a Mellanox switch on top, so that's going to be for 10 gig networking. Let's ignore that for a moment and let's get into the four nodes. Node being another word for server. This is a cluster of four servers. And I'm going to go ahead and detach the cables from one of these. These are just CAT 6A cables. But I've now attached, detached the IPMI or BMC the management, the auto band management here, and the two 10 gig interfaces that the actual VMs and the vSAN will use. Now, when I pull out this node, I just push down here to unlock and give it a pull from both sides, and it's gonna slip right out. So we're gonna see the Xeon under the covers here. And there you have it. Now, we need to have a careful look at what the camera is looking at. Um, I'm behind the camera here for a moment, and we will look at the Intel Optane to start. Two Intel Optanes. You'll notice one flipped upside down here. The PCI slots are next to each other, right? So, of course, one's going to be inverted relative to the other. So, you're looking at the um, passive cooling here through the honeycomb openings in the metal on the, each PCIe, half height, half length, so HHHL PCIe slot for these familiar Intel Optane P4800X NVMe Optane drives. Now, if we look closely here, you're going to see that we're on a 375 gig capacity. So that's over by my thumb right here. All right, two of them. Why two? We're going to get into that in a minute. Now here we're looking at shrouds over some of the memory dims next to one of the CPUs. Xeon-E, and then another xeon -E. This one also has three DIMMs on either side. Back here, we're looking at power. So this chassis is not a blade chassis at all that you might be thinking. All it is is four nodes sharing two power supplies. So if I pull this little lever and this handle, I can show you one of those two power supplies looks like this. This is a Supermicro switching power supply. Efficient and long and skinny, and there's the connector. So, the two of these, well, if one goes down, you can keep running, okay? So this video is not gonna be a comprehensive look at all the operational and software aspects of running or managing the server. This is just a quick first look video at the physical form factor of this four node system. Not just Supermicro making these, by the way. Um, systems like this anyway. Okay, now we've shown you under the hood. I mentioned Optane is on here, right? And no other storage. Okay, let's think about that for a minute. Do we have any M.2 or USB or anything? On this particular motherboard that I'm looking at? I don't believe so. So I don't have a complete build of materials. I'm not even 100% sure until I power this on. Um, is there anything else to look at in this motherboard? Well, there is. I didn't mention this 
orange connector that tends to be for SATA DOM. So SATA DOM modules can stand here and be a boot device for your ESXi hypervisor, like VMware 6.7 Update 1. All right, having a close look around other components of the motherboard, you've got these right angle adapters that are standing off the motherboard to get you the PCIe slot at a 90 degree turn. Notice it's 16 length, but we're only using four lanes, and all we need is PCIe 3.0 by four for each Intel Optane to run at full speed. So if you look at the front here, you'll see, looking closely, some wire traces coming down from the Optane. You see that? Barely. Hopefully in 4K video, you've got a nice screen to look at this on. Um, anyhow, so that's all you need. Four lanes out of 16 to get full speed Optane. All right. Now, putting the system back together, we've already covered power a little bit. We've already covered the design where, um, let me shine the camera and just show you that there's no trickery here with what I said. The power supplies and the connections, it's all just passive. So let me take the camera off the tripod and let's go in closer. Now, got to get um, an LED light here. There we go. Got a light you can shine. And now I can see inside the chassis. And here we go. Power, power, power. There we go. Focus is locked. So you're looking at a power connector. That's it. If you take the system apart, all you're looking at is passive connections to the power supply from each of the nodes over. Okay. So not exactly fancy. Let's do that again. And here, let's get some light in there for you. Again, just a passive design with nothing but power at the other end for the other end of the power supply. So it's a very simple design. Each server is individually managed. There's no, you know, uh, advanced management module, or whatever you want to call a supervisor blade or outside of the chassis management. Nope. It's just all four nodes managed, managed independently sharing two power supplies. Normally you see me doing videos about, you know, my home lab and there's some limitations on ZND and the number of lanes and the number of drives you can fit in here. This is obviously a vSAN ready node, fully equipped to be two disk groups with two caching drives for each of the two disk groups. And that, those two disk groups consist of the drives up front. And I'm going to show you those next. You'll notice there's no metal over this that reduces weight. And the fit is tight enough in the back that airflow is still going to be forced through the holes. Okay, click, that's it. Now just plug the cables right back in where they came from. You got management and 10 gig ethernet over to the Mellanox with a whole bunch of SFP plus two RJ45 connectors. Time to go around the front and get the camera a little closer. All right, so around the front, we have six times four, 24 NVMe drives. Very nice. Rather simple to figure that out, that each of them is two terabytes in size. So if you look right here, you'll see two terabytes is the capacity on this DC P4500 series drive. This is a U.2 carrier. You may recognize that this form factor for some, some of my other videos basically means this NVMe drive is on the PCIe bus. U.2 is just a way to hot swap and move it out with this carrier. U.2 is the form factor here um, with both signal and power along the back. But really, it acts the same as that Intel Optane you saw on the motherboard um, right on the PCI bus. It's a full speed NVMe device. Those groupings, again, six, six, six with a slot in the middle. Just ignore that, that's for airflow. And then another six. Now this Supermicro server, what else could I point out? Well, how about power? We're gonna end this video by powering it up. All right, so you will see a watt meter. Showing one watts right here. 
Okay, and a power strip. So I do not have a UPS big enough to do this. I could split it across two UPSs, but it makes making the video a little tough. So I've decided to go ahead with just one. Do without the Mellanox first, because Mellanox is crazy loud. So I want to show you the servers, and then we'll add the Mellanox last. Firing this guy up, get the Mellanox gibbs out of the way for networking later, and here we go. Okay, so the baseboard management controller comes right up. The server doesn't have brains enough yet to know if it's cool enough in the room that it's in, so it just goes with full fan by default. That's pretty normal for servers. And whether it's Supermicro brand or another brand, that's just how they act. So the noise level in here is gonna get a lot less pretty soon. And that's when it's done booting and realizing, oh, things might not be that bad. Now earlier, I did have the systems on, so the bias is probably shipped to factory default to say, oh, keep the systems on in the last state they were in. Let me demonstrate that. If you look around the front, We'll see the status of the server. And yes, all four are powered up. Let me go ahead and power them down. All right, so we have all four nodes powered down. So now we're looking at IPMI uh, watt burn only. So up on the watt meter there, we're at a modest... 36. Not bad at all for four different IPMI devices that are all booted and waiting for us to turn the server on. All right, so um, that's about it for this physical look. I could, um, oh, the Mellanox, that's right. Let's get the Mellanox going here so you get an idea how loud that thing is. Kind of ridiculous, right? Louder than the servers themselves. Okay, so now we have Ethernet. It's settled down a bit. So the Mellanox alone is about 116 watts. And now time to turn the servers back on. Let's see how much this entire assembly uses without any kind of, um, you know, benchmark or load running on there other than just, um, well, waiting for an operating system to be installed. Can we go ahead and do that now? Here we go, I'm starting 115. That's node A is the bottom left, B is the top left. And now we're turning on C and D. Okay. And there we go. Now we got kind of the blinky light look here for you. Alright. Going back to full illumination, I want to show you what the lot burn ended up being at. So we're at 944. 970 something, all right, it's moving around a little bit. So with a good sense of the watt burn, a good sense of all the physical aspects of the server, I showed you the identifiers, these are the little blue lights you can turn on remotely. And then of course, I'm using physical power buttons, but we could do that for IPMI. Okay, hey, that is not a graceful shutdown, but it doesn't matter. There's no hypervisor, there's nothing on these drives whatsoever yet, so it really does not matter. So that's it for this first look video at the physical layout of this system design by Supermicro. Um, you might call hear these called big twins. Uh, there's even fat twins. They have many different models with the word twin. The twin being uh, two U in this case, but of course, four nodes. So hopefully that about uh, covers a real server, if you haven't seen one before. Um, another thing I didn't actually mention is you got some USB here, you got VGA, of course, for a crash cart. USB would be for your keyboard and mouse. And of course, two more SFP modules there. You could do 10 gig 
four times on this server. Two RG45, two SFP pluses right over there that I'm not currently using. Um, okay, so that's a wrap. That's a complete look at the physical aspects of this particular four-node server. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.